Okay, today I want to talk about getting started with Chrome Developer Tools. So if you are a new web developer, you're just starting out, you're learning HTML, you're learning CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript, and you want to know how you can leverage the developer tools that are in the browser, uh, specifically Chrome. Now, all the browsers have developer tools that are a little bit different in each browser, but I'm going to be focused on the Chrome Dev Tools for this series. If you want to get a little bit more out of the browser and have it help you do your development work, I'm going to show you how to do that through this series. So this is an introduction to it. Um, there may be some new things. If you are a little bit experienced, you may find things in this video that you weren't aware of. There are things that have been added to Chrome Developer Tools in the last few months. So first of all, I want to talk about these keyboard shortcuts. So on Mac, Command, Option, and these three letters on Windows, Control, Alt, and these three letters. If you're looking for those, if you forget where they are, in the View menu, if you go to the Developer section, here they are right here. So you can click on them here, or the option for Developer Tools right here. If you just right-click on the screen, anywhere on the web page, you can inspect, and that will bring up the Developer Tools. So here we are with the Developer Tools open. Now, the elements, this panel, now this is what we get by default with the developer tools. We're opening that up. It jumps to elements, first of all. This is the same as, if I click the little X here to close it, this is the same as if I had gone Command Option C to bring this open. Now, one minor difference between those two ways of doing it with the I and with the C, with the I, it opens up the panel that was most recently opened. With the C option, it opens up elements because C for CSS, J for JavaScript, that's what these keyboard shortcuts are for. The one extra thing that you get if you directly do the command option C to open up the CSS tools, the elements panel, is this option right here. You can see it toggles on and off. And if you do the command option C, it's going to turn this thing on by default, which as you move around and you select elements, you see that I get all this extra information. So it's telling me this is what the element is. Here's the size of it, the rendered size of it, the color, the font, um, all this information, including a bunch of accessibility information about this element. So it's a quick and easy way for you to test your web page to see if you're meeting accessibility standards. So that's a great tool as well. Now, mousing around through here, you can see as I move my mouse around over these things, it will highlight them. If I click on any one of those, it'll be highlighted down here in the Styles panel, so I can see the styling information being applied to this element. Now, I'm going to do another video specifically about the styles. We'll talk a lot about the styles and what you can do with these, but for right now, just know that you can hover over, you can select elements, see what the styles are, or if this option is picked, you also get these handy little tooltips that come up. So there we go, we can turn that off. And the keyboard shortcut for this one is Command Shift C. So we've got the Command Option C for opening this menu, and the Command Shift C toggles this option right here. All right, so that is the first one. Coming back into here, if we do the Command Option J for JavaScript, it brings us into the console. This is where you're going to be working with uh, JavaScript console messages. So if there's an error, this is where you're going to find it. If there's something that you want to know about the page, you can actually write some JavaScript in here. This is a REPL. This is a uh, an interactive JavaScript engine that you can write commands to while your web page is open. So if I wanted to, let's say right here, this H2 element, if I wanted to access that, I can use a dollar sign and then pass in a selector. I can say, okay, find the first H2 on the page. I hit enter and this is what it gives me. Here's the H2 element. So if I want to save that in a variable, I can do that too. Just like you would in a normal JavaScript file. So my H2 selector, now my variable H2, is a reference to this. So I can do whatever I would do in my JavaScript file with this. We've got also this one, dollar sign zero, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three. Right now it says undefined. And that's because in the elements panel, 
I have not interacted with anything yet. If I come into here in the Elements panel, if I click on Body, and then Header, and then Main, we open up Main, click on H2 and P. So I have clicked on this series of elements in here. Now if I come back and I do dollar sign zero, the paragraph, that was the last thing that I clicked on. Before that was the H2, before that was the main, before that was the header, before that I think was the body. Yep, yeah, there we go. So it gives you a history of the things that you have interacted with, and then you can write JavaScript to test whatever you want with these. So if I want to change the style, uh, background color, make that red. There we go. So number three was the header element, and I've changed its background to red. So you can interact with your page in the console. If you ever need to clear this out, we have this handy little button up here. Now I'm going to be doing another video where I talk about the console and a lot more things that you can do with it inside of here. But for now, that'll get you started. All right. Now there are other panels that we can get to from in here. Application. If you're looking for cookies, if you're looking for data that's been saved locally, this is where you're going to find it. If you're working with service workers, this is where you're going to find it. We've got this double arrow, double carrot um, icon here. This is the rest of the menus. So if you're opening the dev tools and you find that, hey, I don't see anything here. I don't have the console. I don't have the elements. They're going to be inside this item right here. There will be other tools as well. This three dot hamburger menu right here lets you move the dev tools to a different part. So it can be a separate window. You can move it to the left side or the bottom of the screen if you want. We can go into more tools and there are a lot more tools and quite a few of these I'm going to be talking about later in this series. But just so you know, we have access to them all through this menu and this menu right here. So application was storage. The network tab can show you all of the files that are being loaded. So when I hit refresh here, it loads in this order, all these files. So the HTML gets loaded, followed by the CSS for the Google font that I'm using. Um, this JavaScript file is one that's being put in by VS Code. It's the live server script. My own CSS file that I wrote for this page and this is the font that was loaded by this CSS file. It's the last one. And this is a WebSocket script, which is talking to the live server in VS Code. Now, one thing you will notice here is when I refresh the page, I'm not getting multiple copies of the same file. So this is just a list of what has happened since the last time the whole process was started. The HTML file was loaded, which then loaded everything else. We can, however, with an option up here at the top, if I click on preserve log and I refresh, now you can see here's the first time it loaded, here's the second time it loaded. So you can see if things are being cached. Now, I do have caching disabled right now for testing, but without this selected, preserve log, I'm going to see some of my requests coming in as, yes, brand new requests and other ones being cached. And again, this is something that I will talk about more in future videos. The console has the same sort of thing. We have the icon to clear it out, but there is an option in this menu for preserve log. So if I were writing out a whole bunch of variables inside of here, so there's zero, get a reference to my main element, and so on and so forth. You know, I'm just writing some various JavaScript commands. When I refresh the page, normally I would lose all of this. But now I refresh and it says, hey, you just navigated to here. So I can tell this is the point where the script is starting again. This is where the page was last loaded. But I don't lose the old information. So whether I'm writing the console log statements in my JavaScript or I'm doing them here, I don't lose the old content if I've got preserve log selected. All right, so that's a whole bunch to get you started and watch coming very soon for more videos about Chrome DevTools. I'm gonna delve into a lot of these other tools, a lot of things that people don't typically use, especially when they're getting started. So 
Until then, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer what I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.